Hello and welcome everybody to the first of the Tourism Ireland webinars um, today, June 25th, where we're going to explore the island of Ireland with our partners from Ireland. My name is Helen Cole and I am the Trade Executive with Tourism Ireland here in Toronto. Unfortunately, we're having some camera glitches, so uh, we have a still picture of myself today, which um, is perfectly fine with me. And today we have three partners coming to you live from Ireland. We have Fiona Herald from the Guinness Storehouse. We have Liz Pickett from the Cottages. And we also have Kay Lynch from South, Southwest Walks, Ireland. So I'm just going to bring you through a quick little um, update. Uh, we're going to be doing a, a webinar themed around a journey from Dublin to Cork today, taking in our partners along the way. So as you know, Ireland is situated in the west of Europe, and it's surrounded by the Irish Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. We have some great, fantastic air access this, this year from Canada, which I hope you're all aware about. And if not, um, I'm just going to give you a quick update. We have Air Canada Rouge, who are flying a year-round service, which started in May of this year, right through to December, um, and then following on from 2015 will be uh, January onwards. Our national uh, carrier, Air Lingus, also started a new year-round access service from Toronto to Dublin as well, and that started in April, going all the way through to December. And of course, we have our regional access with Air Transit, and they have their route from Toronto to Dublin, Toronto to Shannon, which is on the west coast, and Montreal to Dublin as well. And there is direct seasonal access from April to October. And new to uh, the service this year is WestJet with their first European flight, and that actually started just a week and a half ago, and they're flying from St. John's to Dublin from June to October, and uh, we believe that the flight is selling very well out of the Maritimes. So the good news is it's even easier to get to Ireland from Canada this year and the connections throughout um, Canada are very good from Calgary, from Ottawa, as far out as Vancouver. And the fact that we have year-round access means you can send your clients to Ireland year-round even easier. And a really good thing to remember about Ireland, which a lot of people kind of query and a lot of customers query, is Ireland's weather. Ireland doesn't really have any extremes of temperature. We have a very moderate temperate climate all year round. So whenever you send your clients to Ireland, you know, the weather doesn't dip too much in and out. Our hottest summer day might be 23 degrees during the months of June, July, and August. So really you have great weather conditions to experience all that's great to see and do on the island of Ireland. Sorry, I, I clicked through really quickly there. So we're going to start off in Dublin on our journey. And bear in mind that Dublin is a great um, starting point for a... You know, shorter, maybe shoulder season trip to Ireland. And the great thing about Dublin is it's got loads of quirky, cool museums. You've got the National Museum of Ireland. You've got loads of great art galleries. And the great thing about our cultural institutions is they're all free. So a lot of you might know how to get around Dublin. But now there's some great unique ways to see Dublin differently. You can see Dublin by bike. Um, those of you who live in Toronto would be very familiar with the Bixby bike. Well, we have them in Dublin too. But they're really, really inexpensive. You can get three-day tickets only costing three euro, which is about five dollars, and it's really budget friendly. Um, you can travel and see a little bit of Dublin by boat, get a different view of the city along the River Liffey there. You'll see the little cruise boat there. By kayak, for those customers who want a bit of adventure and want to see Dublin in a very different way, then they can actually do a city kayaking trip along the River Liffey as well. Uh, a new little uh, service in Dublin is the Dublin Pedi Bus. And if you have maybe a small group or a family group, um, this little Pedi Bus holds up to 16 people and it even has its own uh, stereo on board. So you can even have your own playlist as you travel around Dublin. All right, moving now from Dublin to Cork, we're going to do a quick stop at the Irish National Stud in Kildare. This is a, a great little trip um, to take 
about 40 minutes outside of Dublin city and it has the beautiful Japanese gardens there, a fantastic horse museum, and um, it's well worth stopping off and seeing. The Rock of Cashel, many of you would know this um, iconic, beautiful medieval building that's set on um, a massive hill. It dates back to the 12th century and uh, is, is stunning. Again, very reasonable to, to go and visit, only a few euro in, and you can see the remains there. And it's really good not just to take pictures, but actually go, go get inside and walk around um, Cashel. This is a great little pub in Cashel, Mike Ryan's, where you can get loads of great traditional music. We're going to stop off Mitchell Town Caves, and that's uh, midway between Cahar and Mitchelstown County Tipperary. So on your way to Cork, um, really great to go in there, see all the underground cave formations, all the stalactites and stalagmites. And something that people wouldn't really, you know, be aware of. So it's a little kind of gem as you travel down to Cork. Uh, last stop is going to be Cove, which is east of Cork City. And this was the final stop-off point for the RMS Titanic before she sailed off to America. And that's a picture of Cove there, a lovely little seaside fishing village where you can get fabulous seafood as well. So that's my quick introduction, and it's uh, you know a, a little trip from Dublin to Cork. And um, we've got partners here: Fiona from the Dublin uh, Guinness Storehouse, and Liz, who's based on the east coast in the cottages, and then A, who's based in Southwest Walks, Ireland. So enough talking from me. I'm going to hand you over to Fiona Herald, who's the um, works at the Guinness Storehouse in Business Development. So Fiona, if you're there, I'll hand it over to you. Hi Helen, thank you and um, hello everyone. Um, I'm Fiona Herald, like Helen says. I'm Business Development Manager at Guinness Storehouse. Um, I'm responsible for all the travel trade business at the storehouse. So a little bit about Guinness Storehouse, if you haven't already heard about it. Um, Guinness Storehouse is Ireland's top visitor attraction. Um, this year we will welcome about 1.2 million visitors and around 32,000 of those visitors are actually from Canada. Um, and that's, we've seen huge growth in our Canadian business this year, um, around 34% um, growth so far. So we're very excited about the new access routes and um, new opportunities. Um, to, to promote in this market. So, um, Guinness Storehouse, um, we're located in the about 20 minutes walk from downtown Dublin, but we're located right in the centre of the Guinness Brewery. Um, so, 20 minutes walk um, from the city centre, so um, very easy to access. So, the building itself is actually an old fermentation plant. It was built around 1902 to 1904. It's an old listed building, and it was remodeled as the visitor experience that you see today back in 2000. So we're celebrating our 14th year um, this year. Um, the brewery itself is slightly older. Um, it, was, um, it was actually purchased by Arthur Guinness, and all the Guinness that sold around the world bears Arthur Guinness's name. It was um, purchased back in 1759. Um, and he, he signed a 9,000 year lease and paid 100 pounds for that lease. So I guess the real estate deal of the millennium. Um, Guinness is now an iconic brand sold all around the world. And all the Guinness that is sold in Canada is actually brewed at the Guinness Brewery, a very famous brewery. It's called St. James's Gate. Um, Guinness Storehouse, the most popular attraction. Um, we are located um, in a really historic part of the city. Um, it's got lots of history. Um, looking back um, to 1759, you've got the old cobble street. Um, this photograph actually so, uh, shows um, an old train track that used to bring raw materials around the brewery. So it was once called a city within a city. Um, the building itself then, if you dissect the building and look inside, um, we um, are shaped around a giant pint glass, and it's a journey through Guinness that unfolds over seven floors. And it's a really powerful building. It's actually an original steel frame building 
based on the Chicago School of Architecture. So um, we do offer guided tours, and guided tours for pre-book travel trade groups, um, for groups from two people upwards. Um, from two to 14 people, there's no charge. Um, there is, um, or sorry, there is a charge of 30 euro. Um, for groups of over 15 people, there is no charge. Um, inside the building, each floor has a different theme. So you're going to learn about the ingredients, the brewing process, the history, the heritage, and of course you're going to get to, to taste um, Guinness as well. So um, these are our tasting rooms. And um, it's a brand new taste experience. It opened last year. And it's a multi-sensory experience and the best place in the world to taste Guinness. It takes the visitors on a, an experiential journey, which is designed to heighten the senses where they really get to appreciate the taste. So um, this is our retail store. We have the largest range of Guinness branded merchandise that you get anywhere in the world. A um, large part of the range is exclusive to the storehouse. And we do embroidery service, and um, we also engrave glasses, etc. And tax-free shopping for Canadian visitors, very important. Um, level 5 is our Guinness and food floor. And we have a selection of restaurants. Um, and we also have a bar as well, artist bar. We do live music. We offer pub food. Um, Gilroy's restaurant is more um, formal dining, um, which is waiter service, and um, the Brewer's Dining Hall is more informal. So a large selection, something to cater for everybody. Um, Gravity Bar, um, we like to say it's the head of the pint. It's the top of the building, and it's actually the highest viewing point in Dublin. And um, we offer panoramic views over the city, and it's where all our visitors receive their complimentary pint of Guinness. And we get to savour that pint while enjoying, uh, relaxing and enjoying the views over the city. Um, we do offer exclusive experiences for visitors. So, so we have the general tour, um, that's open for everybody. But I, I do appreciate that you will have customers that are looking for a more exclusive, upgraded experience. And we also offer that at the storehouse. Um, we, uh, a visitor can learn how to craft their own pint of Guinness in the Guinness Academy, or um, they can um, do a special tutored session with our Guinness connoisseur, or they can get to meet the Guinness archivist. Um, so I'm just going to go through some of those more upgraded experiences that are available at the storehouse. So firstly, on the fourth floor, we have the Guinness Academy. And the Guinness Academy is where visitors can learn how to pull their own pint of Guinness. As you know, Guinness is a very distinctive looking drink. And at the home of Guinness, we like to say there's a special craft involved. And indeed there is. It takes six steps to pouring the perfect pint. So each of the visitors will go behind the bar. Our staff, um, our friendly and helpful staff, will um, explain how to, to pour the perfect pint. And for your efforts, um, you get a personalized certificate of merit. And you get also to enjoy your complimentary pint. Um, you can share photographs of this experience on our iPads outside, um, and this is available free of charge. Um, another very special experience, and um, this opened about a year and a half ago at the Storehouse, and I guess this is the ultimate Guinness tasting experience. So it's tucked away on the fourth floor, and it's where the visitor will meet a special trained Guinness connoisseur, and the connoisseur will do a special tutor session on the four most popular Guinness variants, and they are Guinness Draft, which we all know and, uh, and love, Guinness Barn Extra, Guinness Extra Stout, and Guinness Black Lager. So the connoisseur will really delve under the skin of each of the variants. Uh, the visitor gets to understand the history of the variant, the pouring ritual, the glassware that's used, um, the food pairing, so what, what food goes with what variant. And of course, they get to taste each variant as well. This is highly recommended um, for visitors that are looking for that, that much more exclusive, unique experience. And it's only available at the home of Guinness. So this is our, our connoisseur bar. 
Um, the maximum capacity is 16 people. And we run sessions daily at 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock. And for the summer months, to coincide with our, our um, later opening hours, um, we also run a session at 6 o'clock. Again, the storehouse is, is opened um, 9 to 5 all year round, um, with the exception of Christmas Day and um, St. Stephen's Day. Um, and um, we have late openings um, with last admission at 7 p.m. in July and August. So um, visitors can book into these sessions on an individual basis. So, so please do bear that in mind. Or you can book the entire bar for a private session. You have a private audience with a specially trained connoisseur. Um, the last experience, and this is more for more um, for groups again that are looking, you know, maybe some special interest groups that have particular interest in history and heritage. Um, we offer a special um, audience with um, the, the Guinness Archivist in um, the Guinness Archives, and the archivist will do a, a, a presentation um, with memorabilia and old Guinness Archive material on the top ten golden moments of Guinness history. So another special experience. So thank you very much, everybody. That's, that's everything from me. Um, if you need to contact me, um, these are my contact details. We do offer special travel trade rates, um, and um, we are very travel trade friendly. We have dedicated arrivals hall. We have special rates for groups, um, and special privileges for, for tour guides as well, and for um, drivers, and, and um, special preferred rates, and fast track admission, etc., available for tour groups. So um, that's it. everything for me. Thank you very much. Hi, Fiona. It's Helen here. Thank you very much for Thank bringing you. through your presentation. That was fantastic. Um, I think it really gave an insight into a lot of the agents who probably book Guinness and send their clients to Guinness and don't realize how much there is going on. And we have um, a good few questions for you. Um, uh, Thelma and a couple of others were just wondering if you could outline the group tour costs again and the minimum group size. Okay, so um, so a group, um, so we, we have FIT rates and we have group rates. So um, I, our rates are confidential and I'm happy to deal with any inquiry on an individual basis, but um, they are a, a good discount on our regular rack rate. And um, the, we also offer a free place for driver and guide. Um, a group is anything over 15 people in the storehouse. And we offer, also offer one free place for every 15 paying visitor. So drivers and guides are always free of charge. And special rates for individuals and, and for, uh, for groups, um, which offers a substantial reduction on our, our regular rack rates. Super. So um, yeah, definitely take down uh, Fiona's contact details there. And if you are booking groups, get in touch with Fiona, and she can obviously uh, advise you on particular rates, which yes. is fantastic. Um, Helen, just, just one thing to bear in mind. It is better that you pre-book a group. First of all, you get better rates. You also get a discount in the retail store, and you get fast track admission. And you do get the free guided tour for groups over 15 people, which isn't available to our other visitors. So, um, and we do, we, we very much, we, we took the steer from the travel agent in terms of how much hand-holding the group requires. So, um, you know, um, we're, we're happy to, uh, to work with you on that. So. Brilliant. Um, we have a question as well from Cheryl, and she's wondering about your connoisseur experience. Can that be sure. used for smaller groups? Um, it can. So the connoisseur experience, there's two ways to access the connoisseur experience. You can see it's a beautiful bar. Um, the maximum capacity in that bar is 16 people. And that was done deliberately when it was being designed because we wanted to create a really intimate um, and uh, you know, unique experience for the visitor. So two ways to access it. Firstly, we run public sessions um, at um, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and 6 o'clock. So if you have visitors, say, for instance, you can pre-book into those sessions, subject to availability. 
or alternatively, you can hire the bar um, at a, a time of your choosing. Um, and um, there, there's special rates available, travel trade rates available for both experiences. And again, contact me separately, and I will send you on those details. Okay, um, we're but going to finish off with one last question, Fiona. Um, yeah. It's kind of a double question. Um, uh, no, Arika is wondering, how long would you recommend for a visit at the Guinness Storehouse? And if you can just mention if there's an age minimum um, for a visitor to the Guinness Storehouse as well. Okay. Sorry, I probably should have said, regarding the connoisseur experience and things like pouring the perfect pint, that's only available for over 18. And obviously, we only offer complimentary um, drinks um, to over 18. So um, if you're under 18, you get a complimentary soft drink. So um, the question, sorry, remind me the question, Helen, around How long the, the time limit. Yeah, yeah so the, the time um, at the storehouse, I mean, we are a big building. And um, I mean, it can take a long time to get through the throughout the storehouse. If you're getting the guided tour, um, we it's it's about 15 minutes for the guided tour, but that doesn't include Gravity Bar, where you get your complimentary pint of Guinness, and it also doesn't include um, shopping. So I recommend a minimum of about two hours for a visit. Now we have visitors that spend half a day here, but if, if you're if you're part of a group minimum two hours. If you're an individual, you can schedule a half a day here very easily because there is a lot to see and do. Brilliant. Well, Fiona, thank you very much for um, joining us live from uh, the home of Guinness, Dublin, and we're, we're going to let you go now and we're going to travel on down. So thank you very much, Fiona. Thank you, Helen. Thank you. So that was Fiona from the Guinness Storehouse, and up next we have Liz Pickett, who's from the beautiful cottages in Betty's Town and County Meath, which is about 40 minutes from Dublin, so not travelling too far. Liz, are you there? Dear Helen, yes. yes. Super, we can hear you loud and clear, so I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Good, good morning, Canada. Liz here from our great location on the Irish Sea. Roger and I would like to welcome you to Cottages, to this special holiday destination, and to give you a short presentation. Oh, and Liz, sorry, Helen, I'm just yes. going to interrupt you slightly. If you have your webcam on, just remember to turn it on. Yes, the webcam, webcam, start sharing. Okay, webcam is on. Great. Good. Perfect, we can see you. Thanks, Liz. Good. So oh, here we are. Um, can I minimize that webcam? You have, uh, sorry, I just don't have my... Um, uh, yeah, we're just going to get it back now. Thank you. Sorry for the delay, guys. I'm between the villages of Bettystown and Lake Town just 25 mil minutes from Dublin Airport, in the Boyne Valley, the wonderful Heritage World Heritage location, on Dublin's doorstep, surrounded by the counties of Louth, Kildare, Dublin, and Wicklow, just to the south, with excellent intercity coach and train services. Perfect for a visit to the Guinness Pop Store. You don't have to, to think about driving home. You can have a wonderful day in the city. Here's a little map just to orientate you. The cottages are here, just off the Boyne Estuary. Dublin Airport's located here. And then we have Dublin City. So as you can see, it's a very short trip in by either motorway coach service or rail service, all of which are within five minutes of our cottage gates. The cottages themselves, 300-year-old thatch cottages, directly on the beach. This is our beach frontier. The cottages themselves have been in the family for over 100 years. I like to think we have 100 years experience in the hospitality industry. 
Roger and I undertook a luxury renovation of the cottages in 2000, bringing them up to five-star standard, and they are exceptional. We landscaped organic flower gardens and provided children's play areas and facilities in the gardens. As you can see from the photographs, it is the most stunning location, and the cottages themselves are superb. To give you a little background on the cottages and the interiors, there are six cottages altogether providing accommodation for 25. The smallest cottage is Honeymoon Cottage, Sleeping 2, and the largest cottage, Thatcher's Rest, of which you see the interior here. Wonderful sea views from the bay window. And our main aim is to provide a home from home with superb comfort. All the cottages have feature fireplaces, farmhouse kitchens, which are superbly equipped, luxury ensuite bathrooms, power showers, double-ended baths, heated towel rails, hair dryers, underfloor heating, the works. Everything is fully equipped. We provide linen, towels, toiletries, high-speed Wi-Fi in all the cottages, satellite TV. Our welcome pack is homemade scones, fresh from the oven, which we make our, for our guests on arrival. There's full tourist information in all of the cottages, a mini tourist office, and we also brief our guests on arrival so they have a good understanding of everything we have to offer in the area. I'll just go back there and show you. This is the interior of Thatcher's Rest Cottage. All of the cottages have these wonderful vaulted beams, sea views, and soft furnishings. The bedrooms, again, we've kept the traditional pine furniture, but made sure everything is totally comfortable. The pine, pine farmhouse kitchens, the feature fireplaces, and comfort and quality all around. Now I've just lost my mouse, but here we go. Our gardens are landscaped, organic, and both Roger and I just love our gardening, so we there's a personal touch at every at every turn. We've private parking and it's very family friendly. This is our access to the beach. We're gated by beach and road, so it is private and luxurious. Attractions in the area. Let's start with heritage and culture. Helen gave us a lovely lowdown on Dublin, the theatres, the art galleries, the museums, all of which are within easy reach. The heritage in Mead is superb with castles abounding, Malahide, Trim Castle, where Braveheart was made, Slane Castle, famous for its concerts and distillery. Leytown Races, this wonderful photograph here of the Leytown Races, which is a famous race meeting held on the beach at, at Leytown on an annual basis. We have other race meetings in the county, Navan, Dundalk, Ferry House, Bellustown, all famous race meetings and superb equestrian centres if you wanted to hack out or go for some beach trekking. In sorry, I'm having a little bit of a problem here with my mouse. Here we go, we're back again. Newgrange in the Boyne Valley. Here's a photograph of Newgrange, the megalithic tombs that predate the pyramids. Predating the pyramids is something to be able to, to say, isn't it? The Boyne Valley is just the heritage capital of Ireland. The sites in the, in the valley are extraordinary. We have uh, Monaster Boys High Crosses, Loch Crew Cairns, Trim Castle, which I mentioned before, the Kells High Crosses, and the Hill of Tara, all of which names, I'm sure, ring bells for you. 
golf courses, again, 40 golf courses within an hour's drive. Golfing in Meath is really an undiscovered, an undiscovered paradise for golfers. Uh, we have Royal Tara, Port Marnock, the K Club, which is in Kildare, where the Ryder Cup was played, Killeen Castle, where the Solheim Cup was played, Lynx courses of world standard, and Parklands, just to make your, your heart quicken, they're, they're really, they really are superb. We have, oh, now here we go again. Just having a little problem here with my mouth. Now, fishing, fishing in the Boyne Valley and the Blackwater, fly fishing and coarse fishing. Walking, where walking is the River Boyne, wonderfully designated walks along the river. Coastal walks, you can walk the whole way from the Boyne Estuary to Balbriggan. Basically, eight, 15 miles of, of walking, coastal walking. And then the Cooley Mountains, which are the foothills of the famous Moran Mountains, which are just a 40-minute drive away, where you'll get wonderful mountain trekking. Family activities are just endless. We have Dublin Zoo, Tato Park, which is, is becoming the, it, it is actually the second most visited destination in the country. Fantasia, Waterworld, just as a family destination, it is superb as well. Restaurants, everything from bistro, bistro to fine dining. A really, really good area for, for produce. The Boyne Valley prides itself on its produce. We have the Boyne Series, which produces everything from honeys to cheeses, from, from chocolates to cider. Uh, and of course, Boyne, Boyne Valley and Meath beef and, and pork are, are legendary. And the fishing, the salmon, and the seafood are, are just magnificent. You can, tell, you can tell I'm a foodie. So the cottages are for all seasons and definitely for all generations. They are a superb destination and personally run by Roger and I, and we pride ourselves on the quality of our product. So thank you for listening, and we look forward to taking some questions. Hi, Liz. It's Helen. Thank you so much for your beautiful presentation. I think uh, thank you. it really showcases the cottages so well and, and how stunning it is um, in Betty's town on the, on the coast there. And we have lots of questions for you. Uh, Lisa is wondering about the cottages for smaller children and babies. Is there costs or, you know, um, Yes, we we provide uh, cots, high chairs, stair gates. We have one cottage which is upstairs, downstairs, so stair gates for, for Apple Loft Cottage. And it, it is just, oh, it's such a lovely destination for, for young families because, as I say, parents can relax as it's gated by beach and road. And then when you're on the beach, it's stunning because it's a very shallow, gradual beach. So it's it's safe for, 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 for swimming and for sandcastles. In fact, this just this last weekend, we had our sandcastle and sand sculpture competition. It's the national sandcastle competition, which is held every year here at Betty's Town, and, and that's always a, a, a huge, a huge event. So yes, very, very, very friendly for toddlers and, and family. And we have a playground in the garden with swings and treehouse and uh, a playhouse, a thatched playhouse, which is full of toys and books and wonderfully child friendly. They love it. They won't come out of it, basically. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Good. Joanne is wondering if there's a restaurant on site. I'm probably thinking not, but lots of restaurants nearby. Liz? No, no, lots of restaurants. We don't have a restaurant on site, but what we do have is Relish, which is a wonderful restaurant, which is literally five minutes walk down the beach. And to walk the beach in the evening or in the morning for breakfast, but to walk the beach in the evening, home in the evening by 
the light of the moon on the sea is the most, most romantic thing in the world. It's wonderful. And Relish is a superb restaurant. There are other re restaurants in the village as well. We've, we've quite a selection. And Drogheda is just 10 minutes away, which, again, abounds with restaurants. Um, there must be 20 or 30 restaurants in town. So spoiled for choice. Brilliant. And lots of lovely pubs with good music, too. Fantastic. And uh, Erica is wondering, these, these are year-round. You can rent them year-round? Yes, definitely. All seasons, all generations were open all year round. We fill for Christmas and New Year, and uh, it, it's, it's exceptionally special at New Year because we decorate the cottages with traditional pine, um, deco pine and ribbon decorations and Christmas trees. So it's, it's we go the whole hog. Yeah. And Martin is wondering about the fishing aspect. Um, do you need a fishing license? Is that something that you could help? You, 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 do, you do need a fishing license, which you can get from the local fishing club. And the fishing is coarse fishing and game fishing and um, fly fishing. We have a wonderful tutor for fly fishing who will, will take you on the Boyne or the Blackwater and will, will teach you to fly fish if, if, uh, or, or hone your skills, whichever. Um, so the fishing is, is very well established, yeah. Brilliant. And I'm going to finish up with one more question. Um, and of course, as always, uh, we can pass on contact details if you do have more questions for Liz um, offline. Uh, Jackie is wondering, do you have a cottage big enough for eight adults and two children? We don't have a cottage big enough for eight adults and two children. What we do have and what we get regularly is families coming and they will will divide their group. So Thatcher's Rest is our largest cottage, which would sleep six. And what we suggest to our guests is that they take Thatcher's Rest and maybe Rose Cottage, which is just adjacent, which would be a two bedroom. So you would have then accommodation for, for 10 over five bedrooms or you could take smaller cottage like honeymoon. So we mix and match our cottages because they're in a hamlet like private setting right on the beach. You're all you're all quite close to each other. So it's ideal for family groups where over generations where everybody can have their own space but everybody's together. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, Liz, thank you so much for um, bringing the cottages to Canada. We really appreciate it. And, uh, can, I, can I just mention one other thing, Helen? One to, see, to, to dine together. So if you do have a larger group, Little Orchard Cottage then can, can be the center point for, for dining. Fantastic. Hello, yes. Thank you so much, Liz. No problem. Um, thank you. And bye-bye and look forward to, to... Super. Thank you. Thank you. So up next, we have Kay Lynch, who's with South West Walks Ireland. And Kay, um, we're just going to remind you to mute your computer speakers, and just because we hear a little bit of feedback. So if you can make sure your computer speakers are muted. Uh, we'd like to check that now. Okay, I'll just do that. Brilliant. Yep, brilliant. Um, so we'll hand it over to you, Kay from Southwest Walks, Ireland. That's great. Thank you very much, and good evening, everybody, or good morning, I should say, to Canada from the beautiful Southwest. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about uh, walking, hiking, and biking in Ireland, not just in the Southwest. And we do, of course, uh, offer wonderful holidays for... Got Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, it's Helen again. Can I just ask you to double-check your computer speakers are, are totally muted? So you should see a little uh, red circle with an arrow through it on the bottom right-hand side because we're still getting a bit of feedback. Are you still getting... Okay, um, there's something going on here for me now, so I'd like to see if I can get that. There's mute. I don't see the red line. Oh, I think, did I get it that time? Should be now. It should be okay now, Helen. That sounds much better. Does that sound Sorry. better? I yeah. apologize. That's I obviously okay. did Off you go. the first <laughs> time. Thank you very much. And we're just saying hello to everybody. 
and we in Ireland walk, hike, bike, I hope that we will have something that will interest you and give you some information on the wonderful holidays that we offer for walking, hiking and biking, not just in the southwest, but all over Ireland. And of course, the southwest itself is one of the most visited places in Ireland. So now, just to tell you a little bit about our guided walking tours. We offer holidays on the fantastic Wild Atlantic Way, which covers the area right from the the top of the uh, Atlantic seaboard in Donegal, right down to Cork in the south. We offer uh, holidays in Wicklow on the east coast, and we also offer holidays in Northern Ireland. Our walking guided holidays are all-inclusive holidays, which this, this means is that you have a local guide who stays with you from the very beginning of the holiday right through until the last day, and these holidays normally last for eight days. We do offer shorter breaks as well, like weekend breaks and mini breaks from Tuesday to Saturday. So you have your local guide with you throughout the duration. These, we use fam family-friendly hotels or uh, regular uh, bed and breakfast, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit hoarse today. We, ha we offer a bed and breakfast, and uh, these are normally family-run bed and breakfast and small hotels. We organize the transport each day, so nobody has to worry about their luggage, and uh, everything basically is taken care of. The guide stays with you and actually dines with you every evening. So you have your full Irish breakfast in your B&B &B in the morning. You take a packed lunch with you on your walk during the day, and then you have um, a wonderful, usually locally sourced produce for your evening meal after your, your walk during the day, and the guide will stay with you for that as well. So you, you are accompanied the whole time on our guided walks. We also do offer customized trips on our guided walks also, where you can pick and choose what you would like to do and what areas you would like to cover. Now, the hiking, these are the self-guided walking tours. The, the difference, obviously, is that you guide yourself. And we do ask that people are comfortable with a compass and map reading for our self-guided walking tours. But the huge advantage is that you can arrive and leave on what day that you need to, so you have greater flexibility with flights. With the guided tours, obviously, we are tied to certain dates. And also with self-guided, you can do anything from a four-day right up to a 12-day walking tour. So again, you have lots of flexibility there. Uh, with the self-guided, you get your bed and breakfast accommodation sorted for you every day. We give you detailed route notes and maps. We organize your luggage to be moved from house to house. You don't have to worry about your luggage. You just take your little backpack on your back and your maps and your food and drinks that you need for the day. We also offer a 24-hour emergency backup service. So again, even though you are on a self-guided walking tour, you're never really alone. We always have a backup available to you 24 hours. Uh, we obviously have researched all the walks throughout Ireland, not just in the southwest. We cover all of Ireland. So you can be guaranteed that it is a well-known route that you will be taking, that we have sourced the best accommodation along the way, the best places for you to visit along the way, including areas of historical interest, cultural interest, or anything else we think may be of interest to you. And uh, all your accommodations, again, are the local B&Bs or small guest houses or small hotels. So that's your self-guided walking tours. Uh, we also offer, again, these are self-guided, our cycling tours, very similar to the self-guided walks in that you are the independent traveler in this case. So we organize your bed and breakfast accommodation. We use hybrid touring cycles, which will be awaiting you on your arrival. Again, you will have your package, your information package awaiting you in your first accommodation, which will give you all your daily route suggestions and maps. Your luggage transfer, again, is organized from house to house for you. And again, we offer the 24-hour emergency backup. So you're never on your own. There's always somebody at the end of the phone to help you should you need any extra assist assistance or should you need any backup. And again, we use the local accommodations. And we generally find that by using the local accommodation that the uh, guest um, house owners are very, very helpful to anybody who's visiting Ireland. And they have all the little... 
uh, local uh, knowledge as well for somebody who's traveling on their own. This can be uh, a great advantage, really, because obviously with the guided tour, you have the guide there to answer all your questions and give you all the rundown on the local culture and heritage. But when you're um, operating on your own or as a couple, it's nice to have somebody else to chat to as well. So we do find that the family-run B&Bs and hotels really excel themselves in this service. And I think Ireland in particular, the, uh, you know, the Irish welcome is, is really phenomenal. And this is something that our, our clients have uh, emphasized over and over again that they just love the Irish people and they love the welcome that they get in the restaurants and in the bed and breakfast and in the hotels. So obviously um, we're doing something right, so long may it last. Now again we offer special tours, I just want to tell you a little, a little bit about this. Uh, this allows you to walk, hike or bike wherever you would like. In other words, we'll customize a trip for you. You may have a group of friends. We would normally need about five people to offer a customized trip and we will organize where you want to go. Uh, we will put together the itinerary for you. We, again, will sort out your accommodation and your transfers and your, your transport and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and a local guide if that is what you require also on, on your holiday. So again, we have 20 years experience of looking after people and welcoming people for walking and cycling holidays to Ireland. So we do feel that we have a lot to offer in this department. And uh, again, just to, to give some feedback of what people remark when they come here on holiday for walking and cycling holidays, they're seeing a part of Ireland they wouldn't normally see from a bus or from a car. So we're really allowing people to go into the real Ireland, meet local people. Uh, because we have all the local information, people are getting to see all the little out-of-the-way places. You'll hear a lot about the Wild Atlantic Coast Drive at the moment. We take people into all the Wild Atlantic Way, little hidden treasures and little hidden spots. And this is where you will see the real Ireland. You'll hear the Irish language being spoken. You'll see the local fishermen. You'll meet the local people who are playing music in the pubs. It's a wonderful, wonderful way. They say that the best way to see any country is by foot or on bicycle. And we really do feel that uh, that is indeed true in our case. Again, you have the beautiful sceneries, the purest of air. Here in Kerry itself, uh, we have the gold reserve on the night skies in uh, South Kerry. So that's very special. There's absolutely no pollution, very little pollution in Ireland as a whole, but especially in these little rural places where we tend to take our walkers. And no holidays complete without a bit of fun and the, the crack. And this is always readily available because, again, you were going into rural Ireland a lot and you're meeting lots of interesting people, local people, and seeing interesting things and meeting the local musicians and just having fun in general. And you also get to see lots of sheep. And we do experience, uh, we have, a, as, as Helen had said earlier, we have a very moderate climate. Down here in the southwest, we have the Gulf Stream, so we never have extremes of temperature. And um, so we do get a little rain from time to time, but generally people come very well prepared when they're going on a walking, cycling holiday. It's never a problem. And usually our bed and breakfast owners are always very obliging if, if there is any drying of clothes to be done. They're very obliging. And a pretty picture here of some of the ladies enjoying themselves you can see all sorts of things anything can happen and we're always at the end of the phone to help if anybody does run into any problems this is a lovely picture of Wicklow one of the areas that we cover on the east coast uh, the beautiful monastic settlement here this is what's special about the walking and cycling holidays is that you really do get to see uh, the real Ireland up close and personal and some of these beautiful iconic features. This is West Cork Islands, Bear and the Sheep's Head, beautiful part of the country, very undiscovered. You will very rarely see a lot of visitors on this particular route. So again, uh, and this is Kerry, my beloved Kerry, where we're based ourselves, beautiful Sleigh Head and the Dingle Peninsula. There's so many places, the Burn, uh, where you have the lovely karst landscape. Again, very different, but again, very, very beautiful. I could, I could talk all day really about our destinations, but I just wanted to give you an oversight of where we do cover. This is Connemara again, Killary Harbour there, it's absolutely stunning. Donegal, which is up on the northern coast. And there's Antrim, we run hike and bike holidays in Antrim. That's the Carrick Reed Rope Bridge, not for the faint-hearted, but very beautiful. 
and uh, an added incentive that we're offering for the Canadian travel market is 10% off our travel trade price on our guided Ring of Kerry tour in October 4th to the 11th. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer. Okay, thank you so much. I'm glad that you had so many stunning, beautiful photos of Ireland. <laughs> and that's just a fraction, as you can appreciate. <laughs> I know, it's making me homesick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Helen, I didn't mean to do that to you. <laughs> um, we have a couple of questions for you. Great. Um, Buffy is wondering about the kind of the normal size of your guided group tours. Um, yes. How many people would be in a, a kind of a regular group? A regular group would be anything from 5 to 12. We try to keep the group small because we can give more individual attention. And we find that once the groups go beyond 12, they're not getting the same attention from the guide. So we try to keep them between 5 and 12, Helen. If we do have larger groups, obviously, we will accommodate them. But we would normally then go into a second, a second guide. So we just try to keep them small and personal where they get the individual attention. Great. And how long is the kind of the typical daily walk? It can take anything from between three and five hours, and we do try to moderate the walks to suit all the walkers. So you may have somebody who's slightly more agile than somebody else, so we try to moderate the walk. So it can be anything between three and five hours. But we always do try and tailor the walks to suit everybody. So even if somebody is uh, more experienced than the other, we will try to tailor the walks to suit them. Super. Um, and I think there was another question here. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I was talking about the weather, as were you in Ireland. I mean, is this an activity that you can do all year round? Or, you know, is there better months to, to appreciate the, the walking and the cycling? I would say that, it, well, really, the, the season tends to be from April to October. But uh, we have been seeing that, I mean, our, it, our climate is changing. So... You know, it is, it, it is possible to do some of the walks right through year-round, in my opinion. It's just a matter of modifying the walks, choosing the walks where you know it's not going to be too wet underfoot. And again, and we always stress this, just bring the right gear. Yeah, brilliant. That's Mayor. really what it's about. <laughs> um, <coughs> we always get asked this question, so it's good if, if you make a recommendation, which I know is hard, but Buffy is wondering, you know, when is the, the best, the perfect one of the best times to go to Ireland and, and do an activity like this or do a tour. To do an activity like this, uh, personally, I would say April or May or again September, October. Fantastic. Okay, well, I, we're going to wrap up there now. Um, so thank you so much, Kay, for Thanks, joining Helen. us um, today. We really appreciate it. And thank you. Again, um, just to, to all the uh, attendees today, we have the webinar recorded. We can send on the PDFs of the presentations. And uh, again, I, I believe all the presenters were happy to share their contact details should you have any further questions. So thank you all very much to the presenters. Our next webinar is July 2nd, which is Wednesday, next Wednesday. And that's going to be a look at Northern Ireland. And we have uh, a few partners. We have Fermanagh Lakelands Tourism, fantastic region in Northern Ireland. We have Visit Derry, so you can learn all about the brilliant walled city of Derry. And we have Shelley from Ireland's Blue Book, which is a collection of stunning historic uh, properties within Ireland, and they have a number of properties in Northern Ireland. So thank you all very much. Um, I'm sure you're all going to go for lunch if you haven't had it already while you're watching the webinar. So thank you very much, and goodbye. Thanks, Helen.